Hello, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, I did. It's better when you win. I've tried it both ways. Um, I thought uh, first the, the first thought I had about Saturday is just driving around on Friday and Saturday. How cool for Chapel Hill that people are back for our community and uh, for the the restaurants and the hotels and the the businesses that can go back and flourish again with our economy as compared to last year uh, where there wasn't anybody here and, and how sad. So it, it's just uh, uh, one of the things that, that we take for granted, I think, sometime with sports is that uh, um, it affects everybody, not, not just who wins and loses, but uh, uh, the, the university's economy, the athletics department. We've got to pay for 27 other sports. So... Um, no, number one, that, that was cool. Uh, great to have the pageantry and, and uh, traditions back. Cheerleaders, bands, dance teams, um, bus driving into the stadium with people that, that are cheering the kids as they get off the bus. So, um, and, and then our, our crowd made a difference uh, early in the game for sure. And our students have been just unbelievable. Uh, they, they have uh, they've been so loud and so much fun and and our, our players feed off that uh, and we look at our, our home field advantage we're 10 and four and um, <clears throat> excuse me two of those four have been number one Clemson and number two Notre Dame so we've been pretty good at home and, and going on the road this week it's obviously more difficult to, to win on the road so um, offensively we start looking at it this was our sixth most yards ever uh, in our program history, so we're getting back on track and, and we're getting an identity and, and, and we're more of uh, who we want to be. Um, 59 points two weeks in a row uh, is impressive. And, and last week we, we played a lot of young people the, the fourth quarter. Um, we're starting to develop some depth. I worried uh, a lot that we didn't have three starters practicing last week in the offensive line and and Ed Montala stepped up and had his best game by far. And, and, and the same with William Barnes. And then the other guys could, uh, they still played some, but they, they didn't have the pressure to, to play uh, 70, 80 snaps during the ball game. So uh, good for, uh, good for um, Stacy Searles and his development of, of the other offensive linemen. We, we thought we had eight, nine, maybe even ten that could play in preseason and instead of sitting around and griping about who we don't have uh, programs need to talk about uh, development of players and opportunities for new players and not use uh, not use uh, injuries as an excuse because it, it's uh, you want to win so badly and you want to win for the guys you want to win for your 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 fans and your university and then somebody asks you how's it going and the first thought you have is three offensive linemen are out so it's not going well. I don't know. We're not running the ball well, and we got three guys out. What are we going to do on Saturday? Uh, and the truth is you, you have another guy ready, and usually you put a guy in, he gains confidence by playing, and he becomes a better player. You have better team morale, and you've got less likelihood that, that you get some people hurt. Uh, so that, that helps us as well. Uh, Sam's playing as, as uh, well as he's ever played after we didn't help him much and had the tough start at, uh, at Virginia Tech. Um, he's one of only two Power Five players to, um, in consecutive weeks to throw for more than 300 and run for more than 100, and the other one was Lamar Jackson. And that's pretty good company to be in, after the, especially the way he played last night. Uh, same thing with the running back room with our depth. Uh, Ty Chandler stepped up and had his best game by far, uh, and I, I haven't. We, we haven't had that many transfers, but I do think it takes time for him to get chemistry with the team and, and learn the offense. And uh, so he's like a, a, a freshman coming in. He's got experience at Tennessee, but not with us in this place, on this campus with these coaches. Uh, so I see him get better every day. And that was really helpful. But with DJ Jones being out, it let Caleb Hood step up and get 66 yards. And Caleb got banged up during the game and, Josh Henderson came in and did some good things. So, uh, again, recruiting, development of players is, is helping us as we start looking at uh, uh, getting into a season because these guys hit each other every day, and there's going to be some guys hurt, and you can't 
uh, you've got to take care of the guys after they get hurt, especially mentally, because they lose a piece of who they are when they can't play. But you've got to have somebody else ready to go. Uh, the um, Josh Downs played great again. Uh, the the catch that he made and in, in down in the corner of the blue zone was a difference maker in the game. Uh, but but what a catch! Not many people can make that catch and hold on to it. He blocked uh, really well and smartly during the game. There's a on one of Ty's runs, he's about to block somebody in the back because the guy turned on him. He let it go, then the guy turns back around, and he accelerates and blocks him. So he's just playing really, really well. So our offensive players of the game are Ty Chandler rushing for his 198 yards and two touchdowns, and Josh Downs with 203 yards and catches and, and two touchdowns. So those guys did well. Um, Seven for nine on third downs for the game. We were 0 for 2 in the second quarter. We didn't have a third down come up in the first quarter. We were scoring so quickly. And then uh, so proud the second half. We're 7 for 7 on third downs. And that's what happens when you successfully run the ball. Um, so it's, uh, uh, that was fun. And uh, the one time we didn't score in the red zone was an interception, but we scored six touchdowns in seven trips to the red zone and Virginia had not given up a point in the red zone to this point so uh, really really proud of those guys as they're moving through and Sam has thrown a touchdown pass in 28 straight games every game he's he's played in here and and that's the best in the country right now special teams continue to improve Jonathan Kim has kicked 22 balls off where they couldn't return it so we have not had a kickoff return against us with him kicking this year. I think Grayson had one they returned uh, against us for Georgia State. Uh, we didn't punt during the ball game. Uh, so Ben Kiernan didn't even have to stretch. I told him he owed us. He had to pay us back for not working. He was a fan. Uh, but that's a good thing. And then um, we, we had our first punt return of significance with 38 yards and um, Power Eccles uh, uh, did a tremendous job for a young player of being aware of shielding on the punt return, and we had some guys leading up to the, the sideline return, uh, and we've talked about how important it is that our kicking game get better. So back-to-back -back weeks now, we've had a, a block punt against the opponent and a, a really good punt return. Uh, so we're, we're making progress in that area. The... Um, Onside kick, even the defense of the onside kick, Garrett Walston and Josh Downs did an amazing job of, of watching the ball go out of bounds, but being there aware that they'd get on it, uh, and then it places the ball out at the at the 35-yard line. Special teams player of the game is um, Josh Downs, uh, so he just had an outstanding night. And we said Jonathan Kim was 22 for 22, kicking it out for the year. He was 10 for 10 on, on Saturday night. Uh, which takes a, a, a part of their uh, kicking game out with, with no kickoff returns. Defensively, you, you go back, and we've played pretty good defense the first two games, and um, we played better in the second half after adjustments than we have the first half. And Virginia is a very, very hard team to defend. They're a very unconventional offense, and they ran the ball for 210 yards against us last year. And on Saturday night, our defense stood up and, and – held them to 21 yards rushing and made them one-dimensional. Now, we rushed for 392, and they rushed for 21. And in my experiences as a coach, the, the team that runs the ball better is normally going to win the game. And, and when you have a differential like that, it, it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, so uh, we saw two of the best quarterbacks in the country play. They both put on an outstanding performance but we were able to stay balanced, and I, I thought that was the difference in the game. Uh, we got three sacks against Brendan Armstrong, and they brought in two tight ends some and beefed up their protection. But our outside linebackers played really, really well. They, they, they kept pressure. They, uh, they ran down some, some things. So really, really proud of them. And Virginia's got a lot of seniors on offense. It's the same offensive line we've played against every year. And those receivers are big. They're big and tall at tight end, 6'7", and uh, another one 6'5". So they're, they're uh, really good at what they do. Um, they, were, they had 44 plays the first half to our 29 and probably got a little tired on defense because we were scoring fast and they were having longer drives. Um, I've never seen a, uh, uh, 
a, a swing of emotion like that right before the half. There's six of eight on, on third down, so we couldn't get them off the field. But when we throw the interception first and goal from the five on the red zone, they go score. Then we come back, and we have a decision to make. Do you go for fourth and seven, and you're, you're, you've lost your momentum? Do you try to punt it where you may gain 20 yards, and especially if you, you kick it in the end zone, the, you're not going to gain that much? Or do you take a shot at a field goal? And Grayson and I talked about it, and he's, he's been kicking 54-yard field goals in practice. So we felt like we needed to get some momentum back, so that's why we kicked the field goal. Uh, but after the, the half, I've never been proud of a team. Um, we're playing a team that's nobody in the, the locker room's beaten. They've got confidence we don't. They took total momentum uh, the last five minutes of the half with a 14-point swing. Uh, our body language is not good. Uh, the confidence didn't look good. And, uh, and the guys were able to pick themselves up, come back out, dominate the second half, which is really, really difficult to do when you look at all the stats. In, in college football moving forward. Uh, the second half, we held them to 11 points. Uh, they were two of six on third downs. Um, we, we had an interception, and, and I was really, really proud, and it, it seems insignificant to, to some people, but uh, the game was over on their last drive. Uh, we're up by 20 points, uh, and our defense stopped them. They, they didn't just give them a touchdown. Last year against Virginia Tech, we were way up, and it looked like we are ready to go home and, and didn't compete in the end. So we're playing with more confidence and we're starting to learn to compete as a team the entire game. So um, proud, proud of our defense in, in many, many ways. Uh, we've got to do a better job of playing the ball in the secondary. Uh, some of their deep throws were, were perfect uh, and you're going to give that up, but we've got, we got to get uh, better at the 80-20 ball right now. We're 50-50 we're or 20-80. Uh, and we've got to do a better job there. We had our hands on maybe four possible interceptions and didn't get any. And when somebody throws that much, you, you've got to intercept the ball when you get your hands on it. So that's an area that we've got to improve. And we didn't tackle well early. We tackled better in the second half than we did the first half. The most valuable player on defense was Cayman Rucker, two sacks, a forced fumble, and five tackles. And he, is, uh, uh, he, he rushed the passer uh, very, very well. Uh, throughout the throughout the game, um, Georgia Tech um, they, they've come as far as any team I've seen them. They, they they play Clemson down to the wire. They their defense just shut Clemson down and held Clemson to the lowest uh, uh, amount of yards that they've had in years uh, with an ACC team. So uh, they had a chance to win the game late. They've got 14 starters that have. Uh, uh, on defense that have either started or played a lot uh, at, at one other time. Uh, Jordan Yates has come in at quarterback. He's T.J. Yates' nephew, and he's done an outstanding job. Jameer Gibbs was one of the best running backs in the country that we tried to recruit here. So um, another fun game, uh, another tough game, uh, but uh, uh, we'll clean up uh, Virginia today and get on to, to the next one. Questions? Thank you, Coach. Uh, if you have a question, please uh, use the raise hand button. All right, uh, first one will come from Michael Coe. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, Coach. Uh, if I can go back in time a little bit, I remember seeing uh, you on a promo for the ACC Network's documentary about the 1990 season um, in which you guys played Georgia Tech, who eventually won the national championship that year. And you guys were the only team that Tech didn't beat that year. Uh, it was a it was a tie. So I, I'm just wondering, what are some of your strongest memories from from that game? Uh, Michael, I remember Bobby Ross was the coach, and I have tremendous respect for him to this day. He he did such a great job at uh, at Maryland, and when I was struggling here, when we got here, and Coach Ross was struggling at Georgia Tech, I think he was 0 16. He's the only one that had lost more consecutive ACC games than me. And I asked him before the game in, in those early years, Coach, how do you handle this, man? He said, well, I just keep doing what you're doing, and one day you'll, you'll be good. But he did say, I, I do think this will be the worst game in the history of college football. And he said, neither one of us are any good. The offenses can't score, but the defense can't stop anybody. So it's going to be really interesting to figure this thing out. We beat them 20-17 to 17, uh, on the last play of the game, and 
All they said after the games, at least I know what I'm talking about, that was the worst game in the history of college football, and, and he was right. The next game is, is, is one that uh, really was a turning point for us because it showed that we had made significant improvement, and it wasn't whether we were going to be good or not, it was when, uh, because we, that came down to the end, and people say, you tied Georgia Tech, and I say, no, they tied us. They, they had to uh, kick a field goal late to, to tie the game, and it led to a national championship. So um, we've had some great games with Georgia Tech. We beat a, uh, a highly ranked Georgia Tech team here, and uh, the goalposts were torn down and taken to, to Franklin Street. I got in trouble because I think the next game I said, yeah, I hope we tear those goalposts down again. The chancellor called me in and said, uh, don't be telling students to tear down goalposts that that's not safe. It's not healthy. I said, man, I'm just trying to win. Come on, help me here a little bit. And then I, I, I won't mention his name, but I went to a home uh, for a, an alumni gathering my first year here, and I saw a piece of the goalpost in the pylon from that game. Um, and he said, it's been more than five years, so I'm okay, but we shouldn't be telling it. But uh, that's what I remember uh, about that game. But this has been a great series, and, and it'll be fun to go to Mercedes Stadium um, I was told that uh, obviously our most alum uh, alums are in North Carolina. The second most alumni base is New York, and the third is Atlanta. So we, we expect a huge crowd in Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Saturday night. And for all of our fans griping about playing noon games, we got three night game, four night games now in a row. Don't be griping about how late these are. We, we can't have that perfect time. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Okay, uh, over to C.L. Brown. Mac, you mentioned the, uh, the interceptions that you missed, but you guys now have five turnovers in the first three games after just having 11, uh, well, I should say takeaways, 11 uh, all of last season. What to you has been the difference in, in you know, being able to generate some of those so far? Uh, C.L., we got better players. We've got more depth, so we're, we're uh, fresher during ball games, and we're stopping the run better. So by stopping the run better, you, you have more opportunities because long yardage uh, puts you in a position where you, you can affect the quarterback, you can hit a ball, you can grab his arm. Uh, we had another ball that we, we had a, a strip sack and the ball was on the ground and they got it. So, uh, and we've really, really been pushing uh, the, the turnover ratio. We won the turnover ratio Saturday night. So usually if you win the running game, you win the kick game, you, you win the turnover ratio, you're going to win the game. And um, uh, right now we're getting better in, in all three of those phases, and, and that's exciting. And just out of curiosity, have you ever tried on the turnover belt yourself? <laughs> I have not. Um, um, the, 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 the COVID-10 has not helped me, so I probably couldn't get it around me for one thing. But I guess they can stretch it. we got some big players. But... Uh, no, I, I haven't. That's for the players. And, and in fact, I don't even see them. I would rather, when we intercept a pass, not run down to the student section and cost us 15 yards. So we're going to have that discussion. They were really excited, but we need to act like we've intercepted balls before. Aaron Beard. Hey, Mac. Uh, we've seen teams have great performances and then not follow them up, you know, before, just in, you know, broadly, right? And how do you know you have a team that is capable of sustaining it or, or is prepared to sustain it as opposed to what they did the other night? That was a high point, but they're not going to be able to repeat it consistently to be the team you want to be. Aaron, it's a, it's a great point. And, and one of the things that I, I watched when I sat in your old seat for five years is teams not play well. They just weren't ready to play and they didn't play hard. So I, I promised myself the, the one thing that I was going to, to be passionate about and, and try the hardest is to coach a team that plays hard every week. I remember in my early years, Coach Osborne's Nebraska teams, if, if they were playing an awful team, they played the same way if they were playing for a championship. And, and I, I couldn't figure it out because nobody else was. And you see teams now, and it's just crazy. The upsets we're seeing, and I'm, 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 I love college football. I love the history. I'm trying to figure it out. And other than the transfer portal, I can't figure out anything that's any different. 
and, and maybe that's it. Maybe we're all out of whack a little bit with uh, who's taking transfers, and maybe these teams will get better. Uh, maybe the locker rooms are different. Uh, I just don't know. But, but we're seeing, uh, I, I could go list all the things you and I see every Saturday that say this makes no sense. So one game doesn't seem like it leads to another at all. It, it goes back to the, the Dick Tomey quote to me many years ago, it's not the best team, it's the team that plays best on Saturday. So we're saying, well, this is the best team, but they, they stunk. So the only thing I know to do, Aaron, is they have to practice 100% every day. And that has to be who you are. And that's why we, we, we coach loafs and, and we say, if, you, if, you're, if practice is, uh, uh, it, it's just a mini picture of what's going to happen on Saturday. And I've told the coaches this. You, you see penalties on, in practice, they're going to happen Saturday. We're fumbling the ball in practice. It's, we're going to fumble Saturday. It's just who we are. Uh, so the only thing I know to do, Aaron, is uh, I, I do divide the, the season up into segments, and I do think that helps. So the first uh, phase of the season's over. Those three are gone. So let, let's, But that keeps them from talking about Notre Dame or somebody else. Now we've got Georgia Tech. Then we've got three at home. we we got a great month of college football. And we tell them, you're not even promised the game this weekend. You could get hurt before the game this weekend, um, and you're sure not promised all of them, so you better get ready for each one of them individually and and make it the best you can. Uh, And you've got to build off success. We've got enough mistakes and things we need to fix on defense that we can fix. And offensively, you should be proud that you stunk so bad against Virginia Tech that last week the second half you were better and then we had we put a full game together but but that's the only thing that that I know to do is you in our lives you've got to create an edge every day and in football you have to do the same and if you don't create an edge for practice in the morning because we'll meet at 6 30 then that's a really bad sign for Saturday and these young people have played three really passionate games they played hard even though it wasn't good all the time uh, and I fully expect them to be ready to play Saturday night. And, and Georgia Tech did us a favor. They're good. They, they didn't start well. But now this game with uh, Clemson, our guys understand Clemson. They know how good their players are. So they're going to watch that video all week and see Georgia Tech have a chance to beat one of the best and most talented teams in the country. So that, that ought to wake them up, if nothing else. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Aaron. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Coach, when you're dealing with a situation where somebody says something that is considered bulletin board material, uh, do fans and media make too much of how that can affect how a team approaches a game? Or does it actually have an impact? And and do you see that impact throughout the week, which is why it might show up on Saturday? Or can you kind of walk me through how that can actually help a team if it does? Yeah, Aaron, we got 53 staff members and 106 players, so you never know what affects one as compared to the other. And, and I, I heard Bobby Collins, when I worked for him at Southern Miss, say one time, you've got to throw enough mud on the wall and some of it's got to stick. <laughs> so you've got to get somebody's attention. When I, I was coaching for Coach Switzer at Oklahoma, Brian Bosworth was our linebacker. We're playing Texas. It was my first Texas OU game. I guess at that time it was the OU-Texas game. I couldn't say that in Austin. Um, and Brian Bosworth said to USA Today, uh, I hate Austin. I hate the University of Texas, and I hate Fred Akers, their coach. And I thought, how stupid is that, man? So Coach Akers did a great job. He said, I understand you hate me, Brian. A lot of people hate me. I understand you hate the University of Texas because you're at Oklahoma, but you ought to come to Austin. It's really a nice place, and you should enjoy it. So I go down to Coach Switzer, and I said, Coach, this is just stupid. We need to keep Brian's mouth shut, man. We're going to stir him up. And he says, Coach, they're already stirred up. That, that this is going to be a great game. It's going to be like two Mack trucks running into each other for three and a half hours. And, and what somebody says before a game will have nothing to do with the game because they're going to, they're going to play their hearts out either way. Uh, and I said, well, I just, I just don't believe that. I think you need to shut him up. Well, he was the player of the game. He had 17 tackles. Uh, we played number one. We, they were number one, and we were number two at Oklahoma. And it, it came down to uh, 
uh, the last second, we ended up tying the game 15 to 15, and he was the most valuable player in the game. So um, some people, you, you've got to figure out how to create that edge I was talking to Aaron about. And if, if what somebody says from the other team that's disrespectful motivates you, good for you. Uh, some get ready because they want to play. Some want to be in the NFL. Uh, some are mad because we lost to Virginia Tech, so they, they know we don't have much room for error again. So um, I, I've told them, figure out what turns you on, figure out what excites you, and, and push that button. Because you've got in your life for your family, for your, your wife, for your kids, for your job, you're going to have to create an edge every day, and life's tough for all of us. And, and right now, that's one of the great lessons college football gives you. And we're seeing a lot of young people that play great one Saturday, not come ready to play the next, and just get beat. And you don't get them back. That's the thing. We, we said, you don't get a day back. You don't get a game back. We'd love to have Virginia Tech back. Doesn't do any good. We don't get it back. It's gone. It's gone. And it's gone forever. Not much of a surprise that Bosworth said something like, can you imagine him in the social media era? Good gracious. No, <laughs> I, I can't. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, we're going to go over to Ken Segura. Go ahead, Ken. Hey, Mac. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, Georgia Tech a little bit. Um, you and Jeff Collins obviously were, were hired in the same cycle, and I know that uh, you and Patrick Suttis obviously have you know worked together. But I'm curious um, – you what they're doing, you know, just recruiting, program building, also so forth. Then, just do you view tech a little differently because in the state division you're kind of competing for recruits? Do you kind of keep tabs on them, maybe in a different way because of that? Uh, you know, Ken uh, Patrick Suttis is their general manager, and uh, I hired Patrick from Alabama at Texas, and he was our recruiting coordinator. And he's as good as him in the country. I love Patrick. Uh, I love him today. And Billy High is our general manager, recruiting coordinator, and he grew up under Patrick. So when uh, I couldn't get Patrick to come, because uh, he's, he's my guy, uh, he, he gave us Billy's name, and, and uh, Billy's been a superstar for us. Uh, but because of that, I, I, I follow Patrick because I, I like him as a person, and, and uh, he, he's really, really good at what he does. But... Our recruiting staff pretty much keeps me up to date on um, who's signing who, and I always want to know if somebody commits one or signs one, did we not want him, or why didn't we get him, or why don't I know his name, or uh, so yeah, and I'm, I'm on Twitter. I used to be on Twitter with all of our opponents, and, I'm, and sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. It's just to kind of get a feel of, of what they're talking about during the week, uh, but uh, in recruiting right now, Billy pretty much keeps me up to date. And and when I'm uh, eating or something, I'm like everybody else, I'm uh, addicted to my phone more than I should be. It always makes me mad when I see on, on Sunday when they tell me my my hours for the week. And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm telling kids not to be addicted. And I got this thing in my hand all day. Um, but I'll, I'll flip through it and see who's doing something. If I see a recruit that commits to somebody or somebody's offered somebody, I'll – I'll send it to Billy and say, who's this? Why, why don't I know him? And, and, uh, but, but we try to keep a pretty good feel of what's going on uh, with the programs in recruiting that we are coaching against. Thank you. Hey, Greg Barnes, Thank you, go ahead. Hey, Mac. Um, you mentioned Virginia rushing for 21 yards. Uh, they also threw for 553. And, and by my rough count... That appears to be the widest, widest uh, difference in those numbers in ACC football history. What does that tell us about the role of defense and how it's changing uh, in the spread era? I, I think, uh, Greg, to me, football is still football. And, and when you can run the football, your protection's better, your play action's better. Um, so I don't want to go into a game where we can't run the ball. I can't even imagine coming and talking to you all with 21 yards rushing. Oh, my gosh. You got mad last week at 208. What's happened, man? We're not running the ball. And Sam's running the ball, and we shouldn't count those. Those aren't yards. They don't really count. So I thought when people were whining about all the passing yards leaving, uh, it's what we don't do well that people whine about. And I got that. But it's all about winning. It's just about winning. 
They rushed for 210 yards last year and scored 44 points. I'd a lot rather them rush for 21. Now, should we break on the ball better? Yes. I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to sack people now if, unless you're behind and the guy's standing back there, and especially with a really good quarterback like Brennan that gets the ball out of his hands quickly. He's really smart. Um, so we put pressure on him. We hit him. We got him off his rhythm. Uh, but we didn't, we didn't break on the ball like we wanted. Uh, we did try to keep it in front of us. We didn't want them throwing it over our head like they did a couple of times. Um, and we got to catch the ball. If we have four interceptions, five interceptions, we're having a different conversation. So there are things we can improve uh, 100%. But if, if we hold people to 21 yards rushing every week, we're going to be really happy with the way we end up at the end of the season. And if we rush for 392 and hold them to 21, we're going to be really happy. And if we, have, uh, if we force more turnovers than they do, we're going to be really happy. If we win the kicking game, we're going to be really happy. Uh, but it's all about winning and then try to figure out how to win that game and then go to the next step. And, and what can we work on to improve? Uh, it's easy to coach uh, our, our linebackers in secondary this week. Because they, they weren't happy. So it's easy to coach them. But 21 yards rushing, that, that's pretty good stuff in modern day football. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Adam Smith, go ahead. Mac, next time you have your phone, feel free to click on some stories if you like when you have your phone in your hand. You know, it's, it's interesting, Adam, I, because I'm ADD anyway, probably. I, I sit there all the time and I have it, and then I, I'll sit there and. Uh, I don't, I don't read stories, but I see people I like, so I'll, I'll like one. And I've gotten in really bad trouble a couple of times that I didn't read them. <laughs> and, and I'm not even aware that people care what I like. So there was one that uh, came up, a, a, I think it was last year, where it was not good. It was something for Texas and Shaka Smart after they got beat. And I saw something with military, and I saw something with Shaka. I love both, so I liked it. And then Jeremy comes in and says, what are you doing? That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I said, what do you mean? He said, you like something that's really not fair to shock it. And I, I said, I wouldn't do that. He said, look here, you just did. I didn't read it. I didn't look at it. So uh, I'm trying to, to do less likes, but I, I sit, I'm a multitasker, so I'll be working on this, doing that, and I'll be looking at this, and I'll like, 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 like. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to back off my likes, and I'd like to be able to read them before I like them from now on, but that's... That's, that's something I'm working on emotionally. Jeremy's always watching. Uh, what I was going to ask you, um, on the subject of Sam and, and his running, and, and you have said you guys knew he was a capable runner. You've said, you know, you, know, you knew it was possible to, for him to have success in the running game. Still, you know, we're talking about, I think his two previous game highs were like 35 and 41 rushing yards, and he's gone over 100 now twice. Like, how do you find yourself sort of recalibrating what you expect or think is possible out of that aspect of your offense when he's like sort of exceeded what he's done by such a drastic level? Yeah. Uh, Adam, you, you've got to, to be innovative with who you are and uh... – uh, we didn't do a good job offensively in the opening game. And, and since the second half um, of, of the Georgia State game, I told Phil Longo, I've, I've never seen an offense flip better and Sam get back on track uh, because we were bad at Virginia Tech. And, and um, it, it, it was a tough pill to swallow. And, and we had since January to fix it. We didn't. But the, Phil and the offensive staff have done an amazing job of fixing it since the halftime at Georgia State. And part of that tweak has been Sam running. And, and I watched uh, Lamar Jackson last night. I mean, he made a difference in that ball game with his feet. And, and I don't want a quarterback ever again that can't run. Brennan Armstrong can run. He didn't Saturday night, but he did last year. And he really hurt us, and we were going to make sure he didn't run and beat us in this, in this, in this ball game. Uh, so um, I, I just think it's, it's, that's the coach's job is to figure out who we are 
and what we do best. And one of the things we're doing best right now is Sam running the ball. And when he can run the ball with the option, he can scramble. Um, that changes the way they coach defense. Because if he's just going to stand back there and drop back, uh, they can get all their twists and their, their plus ones, and they can do a lot of different things. But, man, when he can run, and I saw it happen with Vince Young and Colt McCoy. you you got to rush the passer differently. When, when you run by him, he can run for 15. And that's what Sam's doing right now. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. I still want him to slide more. I still want him to – he kind of let up right on the boundary and got hit right in the face. And I, I want him to get out. I want him to take care of himself. But uh, this is a new part of his game, and he's really, really enjoying it. And uh, he's running at 10 yards a clip. And, and I think it's just uh, – it's what you hire coaches to do is figure out what can your personnel do best – uh, and then and turn them loose and let them go, and that's what the offensive coaches are doing right now. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. All right, guys, we got two more here, real quick. Kara Luck, go ahead. Hi, Coach. I hope your your Monday is going well. Um, I just wanted to have a um, a quick question for you regarding the unity patches and the school's decision or the team's decision to keep having it after the twenty twenty season. I know, you know, a lot of the, the unity and, and racial um, conversations have toned down from last year, but I found it very commendable that you guys still had the, the patch still on the jerseys. What made you guys want to continue having that beyond the 2020 season? Kara, it's, it's a, another great question. The um, racial injustice hadn't gone away. And, and maybe we haven't had as many public incidents right now that throw it right in our face. Uh, but our guys, uh, we, we ask them, number one, do you want to continue? Because the NCAA will allow them to have the patch again. And we ask them, do you want to continue with the same patch that uh, Taman uh, drew? Or do you want another patch and, and have him, him draw it? Uh, but we, we've got wonderful young people on this team. And they pick me up. I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing how many of them come by and say, are you Okay. Because uh, they know how down I get when we lose a game, and um, but they're they're just they're just wonderful people, and um, uh, in a right way and in a classy way, we want to continue to 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 show that we expect change and want change, and that everybody should be treated the same way. And uh, unity means that we don't uh, uh, we don't look at uh, differences in color. Okay, last one for Coach will come from Ross Martin. Hey, Coach Brown. I just wanted – you mentioned the offensive line you're open. I just wanted your perspective on kind of what you see on tape from that group in terms of the rotation you used um, in the uh, Virginia game, like working all the different players in and the health of that unit right now. The, the biggest thing, Ross, is that I, I, I thought I saw, and Phil can talk to you more about that here in a second, is Ed Montalus has had great plays and bad plays. And he's a, he's a guy like William Barnes that were teammates in high school. And we've needed them both to, to play as good as they are because they're really talented. And I thought Saturday night was the first time that both of them played at a very high level and they played like starters. And you just don't want backups to go in and, and, and rest somebody. You'd like for the guy that comes in, even if he's not as talented as the starter, You'd like for him to give you 10 plays or 15 plays uh, rested with high energy that would be as good as a tired starter. But these guys played really, really well on Saturday night, and that's got to really help us. Uh, and and I, I really believe this, and, and we're always hesitant. Uh, an assistant coach will not put a player in unless he trusts him. And unless he trusts him based on maybe past performances and as a backup role or in practice, I mean, the assistant coaches, the young player has their check in their mouth. I mean, if they play bad, he gets fired. So they're not going to put them in unless you really trust them with your life, with your check, with your job. And on uh, Saturday night, for the first time, Stacy Searles is so excited about William Barnes and Ed Montalus. And now they've got to do it again. They can't walk around like Andrew was talking about and feel good about themselves and then... Um, 
uh, or Aaron, Aaron, I guess, was talking about how you get them ready to play. They can't be satisfied. They've got to be motivated and passionate about getting better. And that's a very difficult thing to do because everybody's going to brag on them this week. It's one of the, the tough things about social media. When you win, everybody looks at it because they get so excited that everybody's bragging on them. When you lose, nobody looks at it because it's awful. And you got to be careful that you don't look at it and think, man, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty cool. And then lose some of your edge. I've, I've always thought like you ought to coach and play like you lost the game the week before. And you can coach guys a lot harder after you lose. I mean, after you win than when you lose. You, you own them and beat them down after a loss. Everybody's beating them down. You got to pick them up. You can still be direct with them and talk about facts. But when they win, you got to coach them hard, man. You can't let them walk around. And uh, these seniors, this team accomplished something. These seniors specifically, they've never done. So that's really cool. They did something that hadn't been done at this school in four years. That's really cool. Forget it. It's a lifetime memory, but not for Saturday night. And Ross, that's the, that's the part of coaching that's tricky. But, but trying to, I, I love developing a team. I, I love to, to, to see, let's get more depth here and let's build up here and he can play. And, and then I love challenging our coaches on Sunday. Why didn't he play more? He's been practicing. Put him in, man. Trust him. Well, you know, I wasn't sure. He hadn't been out there that much. Teach him. That's what we do. And, and I love doing that. And, and I was so proud. Uh, Saturday night was a, a time where um, I was worried about injuries and our, our depth and our coaches stepped up and they managed it for us. And, and, and that was really, really um, a positive for us moving forward. Now, the big question, because we haven't played We've played up and down some. And this is a team that, that's got some older ones and really young ones that are playing. Uh, this is the first time it will really be a challenge to see will our team play good after a win? Or will we start walking around being cool again and get hit in the mouth? Because Georgia Tech's going to be ready to play. They're going to be confident. They're going to be excited. It's a road game that's harder than a home game. So we better get stirred up and have a great week's practice and, and expect to fight. All right, Coach, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you all. Have a good week. We'll see you Wednesday.